Hey, what's going on, guys? Today, I am going to teach you all about buying businesses, how to finance them. I see a lot of people interested in this topic, and I see a lot of advice floating around that, <clears throat> to be honest, I personally would not give. And this is someone that I finance at business acquisitions every single day. And so I want to get down to what you really need to focus on and understand the entirety of the process. So this way you can actually go out, buy a business, close, because I do think there's a reason why purchasing businesses is so popular. There's so many entrepreneurs that are re ready to get out of the game, ready to retire. And this is a massive opportunity for anyone that wants to take advantage of that. Right now, you might be working for somebody else and looking to work for yourself you just want more out of life or you could be rolling up and trying to expand your business by offering other services whatever it is it's still a great investment and it's an investment that when you get right can yield returns that are so much higher than anything else first thing you have to know is what is the purchase price of this business right i say that because i only want to focus on businesses that are going to get closed by an sba loan OK, prior to or <clears throat> before we get into SBA financing, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the other ways that you can buy a business, particularly seller financing which is very popular or you could do an asset sale. <clears throat> the reason I'm suggesting one or the other is based on purchase price and how you would get it done. So anything that has a purchase price of over 350,000 that is perfect for the SBA anything under 350,000 the SBA is going to be very challenging cuz under 350,000 it goes into their black box algorithm when someone comes to me the first thing i ask is what's the purchase price of the business if it's over 350 we'll use an SBA if it's under 350 and you want to use an SBA i'm probably not the shop for you and the reason is I've seen so many of them go sideways. I only want to take on clients I know we can get the job done for. So let's talk about buying a business under 350. How do you do it? If it's asset heavy, you could buy the assets of the business using equipment financing. You get three to five years to pay off the note. You own all the assets and that seller gets his money and he gets to walk. The other way, a term loan will get you anywhere between 20 and 150,000, three to five year terms again, and it only goes off of your credit and provable income. So that's a great way to get a deposit for seller financing or to pay for a business that is gonna be under 350,000. That's two of the ways I would consider buying some of these businesses that are listed that are a little bit cheaper, right? Now, the businesses that are 350,000 or more, I would tell you, you want to use the SBA. And if you look at what the SBA goes up to on the website, it'll say 5 million. I can tell you that I have banks that will go well above 5 million for any acquisition as long as you qualify. Basically what happens is the SBA will stop lending at 5 million, but the bank believes enough in the deal, believes enough in you and believes enough in the acquisition that they are going to match the terms of the SBA loan and offer you a second loan that'll run concurrently or simultaneously with the first. And that's how you can close on businesses above 5 million using the SBA. So I think that's a very important point to know, all right? Because a lot of people disregard or don't consider the SBA when the purchase price is 5 million plus. However, they still offer some of the best and cheapest financing around. What are some other things that you need to know? A lot of people will tell you how to evaluate how much a business is worth. You want to put a price on it. There's a lot of different formulas, but if you're looking to get it financed, worry about the net profit because that's what they're going to be looking at. They're going to look at the net profit of the business. They're going to look at the assets. And they're going to want to see if the business cash flows. So as long as you can cover or service the debt, that's step one. You can qualify. Step two is, do you have enough collateral, dollar for dollar, that the bank is comfortable? 
the way they figure out this collateral piece is going to add up all the assets of the business you're buying and all of your assets. They're going to value them at 85%. So let's say you have $10 million in assets and you have $5 million of debt on those assets. In that case, they're going to value them at 8.5 million. They're going to subtract the debt. And so you have 3.5 million in pledgeable assets. As long as the loan is 3.5 or below, you have dollar for dollar coverage and you should be able to get approved. Those are the two metrics they're looking at. Now, how do you determine what a business is worth? How do you determine what to offer? This is very important. You need to collect their last three business tax returns. You need an asset list. You need the prior year's financials, so P&L with a balance sheet. And you need year-to-date financials, P&L with a balance sheet. Most, most banks will heavily discount year-to-date because they can't verify it. However, it is important. They want to see that the business is actually operating and still holding to the profit margins that were on the tax returns. So that is important. It's important for an approval. It's not so important for the dollar number that you get approved for. Okay. Next, you want to figure out how much taxable income they had. Or what was their profit? All right. Typically for every, and please, again, write this down. If you're buying a business for every 55000 in profit that business generates, you should be able to qualify for 350000 over 10 years. Okay, so if the business has a purchase price of 700,000 and on their tax returns that they have had 110,000 in profit the last two years or three years straight, that business is priced fairly. You will get approved for 350 over 10 years on those terms as long as your credit checks out. Credit is going to have to be 680 plus on anything with the SBA. Now, if the business you're buying has property, meaning they are selling the land the building is on, that allows us to go out 20 to 25 years, okay? Which means for every 55,000 in profit that that business generates, now they'll qualify for 700,000. Why? Because you're including property. So if you're looking for businesses that own the real estate as well, whether we use a SBA 7A or an SBA 504, you can still go out 20 to 25 years. For every 55,000 in profit, you should be able to qualify for 700,000 over 20 years. These are the numbers that you have to analyze to see if the business is worth moving forward on. Do they have assets? Are the assets valuable? And does it cash flow? Whether you're buying it with a, yourself as an individual or a new entity, or you're buying it with your current business. They're still going to look at what that business produces in cash flow and then what you produce in cash flow. All right. And those two components, meaning the person you're trying to buy or the seller that you're trying to buy their business and you add up to your global cash flow and also add up to your global debt. So the more revenue your business pr produces, the more you can buy and the more that the business you're buying produces, the more it's going to qualify for. Where this gets tricky is if you're trying to buy a business that isn't priced fairly, you can also get hung up when they don't have the documents to produce. So if you see a all cash business, just know it's going to be much harder to get approved for a, a fair purchase price, right? Because you have to be able to prove the income of that business. Once you get those items, the tax returns, the financials, the asset list, you can put together an LOI or a letter of intent. This is super important for any of you that are trying to buy a business. You can't even get it underwritten prior to having an LOI. The LOI needs to have the purchase price. I would strongly suggest having 120 days of due diligence because most times it's never the buyer who is the problem. It's always the seller. The reason I say it's always the seller is because they also have to get you documents in a timely manner. So by having 120 days of due diligence in your LOI, you're giving yourself some wiggle room and more time to actually get it done. So you don't feel like you're rushed and you have a gun to your head. 
The other thing I would also include in your LOI, and this saved one of my clients about 400,000, is you want it subject to a third party appraisal. The purchase price is either gonna be the price agreed or the third party appraisal, whichever one is lower. You do this because you don't wanna go through this entire process and then the seller thinks his business is worth 1.5, the SBA comes back at 900, and now you have to come out of pocket 600,000 for the difference. All right, that's what we're trying to avoid here. And I will tell you that on the two instances that I had a client put that in the agreement and they listened to me, one just closed, he got a business that he was originally gonna buy for 2.2, for just over a million. So he literally saved the million dollars on the business he was buying because he had that. So I strongly recommend having those in there. And now what do you have to do when you're getting ready? One, know where your credit is. Two, you want to find whoever you're gonna use to finance it. You wanna establish that relationship and establish it early. Why? Because you wanna know exactly what they need, how they need it, what they look for. And, and three, <laughs> this person <clears throat> needs to know what banks are lending to what types of businesses. A lot of people get frustrated utilizing the SBA because they don't realize how the SBA works. The SBA just stamps it and says, hey, we're going to guarantee 80% of this. But the bank that is underwriting it has a different appetite for businesses. So each bank has their own appetite. Some love deals that cash flow, some line, like online businesses, some love asset heavy businesses some love businesses with property to get the the sba approved you need to go to the right bank that fits exactly what you're looking to do an acquisition in itself isn't solely what a bank wants to do they want to know the type of business bank by bank it differs wildly what types of businesses they want to lend to this is why people have so much trouble with the SBA. They don't go to the right spot or use the right person in the beginning of the process. Once you find your person, you can start sending them some of these deals so they can give you the same type of input that I'm giving you. If it's going to make sense, great, then you move forward. If not, no big deal. This is why there's so much confusion around the process because no one really knows these things. So when you find a business, make sure you have somebody that you can run this up against. They can tell you, hey, this is what I would offer, or I wouldn't offer more than uh, a million for this business. That is the best way to utilize the SBA. Just know anytime you use the SBA, even though I said 120 days of due diligence, it usually takes 60 to 90 days to get a term sheet. Okay. So that's from your, you submitting everything in then the bank underwriting it and providing a term sheet. Once the term sheet is sent out, signed and completed, you send in a good faith deposit. It's very small, usually like 2,500 to $5,000. Once that's in, it usually takes 30 to 60 days to close. Okay. That's the true timeline of any type of SBA loan in an acquisition. So that's the time frame. Well, you have to get everything to be able to close quick enough. That's from a high level, what it takes to buy a business and what are some of the things you have to start considering. I hope this really helped you. If you guys have questions, please reach out. I'm here to help. I want to be a resource for you guys. I'll catch you later.